Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. You know, over the past couple of flights, I've had a lot of airplanes that are hand launched. I had the Mini Talon, the Nano Talon, the Spec Wing, the Drift, the Dart, a lot of hand launching going on. One of the things about hand launching that I notice a lot of people do is they'll put the airplane in one hand and they'll bring the transmitter up to their mouth and they'll use their chin or their lips to move the throttle. And then they chuck the plane and hope for the best while they scramble to get their hands back on the radio. I'm going to give you some tools in OpenTX to help make your life a little easier during hand launching. Like I said, this idea came to me after all the different hand launch planes I've been flying lately. And one of the things that you have to be able to do is manage throttle. So I thought I'd show you a couple of little techniques using logic that will allow you to, instead of fighting your way through using your mouth on the radio to hit the throttle stick, if you're a right-handed person and you're chucking the plane with your left hand, it's kind of a mess. So instead of doing all that, I thought I'd show you how to go ahead and move your throttle over to your right slider so you can manage the throttle with your right index finger while you chuck the plane. And then once the plane is in the air, you can get your hand back on the sticks and take over throttle the normal way without really fussing around with the radio at all. So it's a simple logic trick. And one of the assumptions I'm going to make right off the bat is that you have an effective throttle cut. I'll show you my throttle cut on the screen here. You can see when my SH is down, I'm overriding channel three, which is my throttle channel with a value of negative 100. And that's always on. So no matter what I do with logic, if my SH switch is pulled toward me, my throttle is locked. So let's start with that premise that you have a functional throttle lock in place first because your safety is your responsibility. I have a throttle lock in place. To make this all work, there are three things we need to do. Most of the work occurs in logical switches. So we have to make all of the things happen the way we want using logical switches. It's also not a bad idea in special functions to give yourself an alert to tell you that there's something going on. And then finally, we have to make a couple of minor modifications to our mix to enable this launch mode. So let's get started. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. In the Logical Switch tab, I have four groups of functions. I'm going to go through these step by step so you understand exactly what's going on. We'll start out with the first group, L01 through L03. What I'm trying to accomplish with this group of logical switches is to get my sticks where I want them for launch mode. We'll read through the logic real quick first, and but don't worry, if you can't read the logic, I'll show you how it works in the simulator just so you see it. I'm using L01 and L02 to create a bracket for where I want my throttle stick to rest when I enable launch mode. In my case, I'm using a value of negative 20 and zero, which translates to 40 to 50%. So I want my throttle to be at 40 to 50%. And the reason we're doing that is because we're gonna be using the right slider for throttle. When I transition back to my stick, I don't want the transition to drop the throttle all the way back to zero or to necessarily gun it. I want it somewhere in the middle. You may need to change these values depending on your setup. I'm just gonna use 40 to 50% as my example. Okay, so the first one says when the throttle is greater than negative 20, which is 40%, and it's less than zero, which is less than 50%, then I want L2 to be active. And notice on this third column, I have a button that says L01. So what this means is that L02 goes active when L01 is true and L02 is true. So in my case, when the throttle is greater than 40%, and less than 50%, I want L02 to be active. The next logical switch, L03, says when my right slider is less than negative 99 and L02 is lit, which means when my right slider is all the way down and my throttle stick is where I want it to be, then activate L03. All right, let's see how this plays out in the simulator. Notice that L01, L02, and L03 are all dim. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate L01, two, and three by putting my throttle and my slider in the positions that I want for launch mode. We'll do that by sliding the throttle up to 40 to 50%. And when I do that, one and two will go active at the same time. Okay, notice that one and two just went live right over here. Now we need logical three to go active by moving the right slider down to zero, remember? L03 says A is less than X when the right slider is less than 99. So the right slider has to come down to zero. And when we do that, now I've got L03 active. L08 is active, but I'll cover that momentarily. 
The next thing we want to care for is we want to only use this launch mode when we've activated it with the switch. As you can see, L01, L02, and L03 cover my stick positions. That's the first parameter of L05. Okay, L05 basically works out to be our arming switch. We only want the arming switch to go into effect when our stick conditions are met. That's L03, and notice that L05 is an AND switch. So when L03 is true, meaning our sticks are where they belong, and then you notice in V2, I've got the SA switch down. When that switch is pulled to the down position, then L05 is active. That's basically the launch mode. So we want that launch mode to be active when our sticks are where we want them and when our arming switch for launch mode is activated. So let's take a look at that and prove out logical 05. Remember the objective here is to get L05 to light because when L05 is lit, that means our launch mode is armed and our sticks are where they need to be. So first we'll move our throttle into that 40 to 50% range and we'll see one and two go active. There we go. Now we'll move our right slider down to zero and we'll see three go active. There we go. And now we'll arm launch mode by pulling SA all the way down and we should see five light up right here. Okay. L05 is lit now, launch mode is ready to go. The last thing we do before we start activating the throttle is release the throttle cut. So before we actually fly the plane, now is a good time to release the throttle cut. And don't worry, everything will be safe because if you look at channel three, when I release that throttle cut, channel three will stay at zero. So I'm just gonna release my throttle cut. There we go, and notice channel three is still zero. The next thing to do is to define the termination sequence for using the slider as the throttle. In my case, what I'll say is when my throttle stick, I3, moves more than 10 points, either up or down, that's what this absolute D means. It means the absolute delta in change from X. So anytime my stick, my throttle stick, moves 10 points, that activates L07. The other condition that I'll be happy to take is when SA switch is no longer down. So when the SA switch is no longer down, or when I move my throttle more than 10 points in either direction, L8 becomes active. The last thing we need to do to tie it all together is use the sticky switch. I used L10, and in my sticky switch, I have an on, which is L5, and an off, which is L8. That's how a sticky works, on like a light switch. L5 is on, L8 is off. So when L05 goes on, L10 becomes active, okay? So L10 means we are in launch mode. So L5, remember, is when my sticks are in the right position and my switch is down. That activates launch mode. Launch mode is turned off when L08 goes active. L08 is satisfied when I move my throttle at least 10 points or if I move SA off of the down position. So when I do that, L10 is deactivated. So let's see what that looks like in the simulator. All right, by now you should have a pretty good idea on how to get L5 lit. We'll put the throttle at the 40% range. We'll bring the right slider all the way down and SA is already down. So there we go, we've got L5. That means we're in launch mode. One other quick thing I'll point out, notice this negative 10. When I move my elevator back toward me, notice my elevator goes negative. If I let go, it's settling at negative 10. When I turn launch mode off, it goes back to zero. I'll talk more about that in just a minute, but for now, let's stick with the throttle. So on my right slider, I'm gonna advance the right slider and watch my throttle move up. You see how I've got full control of my throttle on channel three right here with my right slider. As I move my throttle up and down with that slider, I've got full control of the throttle. Now imagine holding your radio with your right hand and using your right index finger to add or subtract throttle while you chuck the plane and then being able to use your thumb to manage your elevator, right? Does that make sense? Okay, let's say I've got the plane off the ground, I've got the throttle sitting there at about 60%, and now I want to move over and take over with the throttle stick. Remember what I said, launch mode is terminated when L10 is turned off. Right now, L10 is turned on, that's why we've got control of the throttle with our right slider. You see that? Now, in order to make L10 go off, L8 has to become active. And that will happen if I either move the switch off of SA down or if L7 goes active, L7 goes active when I move the throttle stick. And I simply start flying the throttle with the throttle stick over here. Notice how channel three goes up and down. And if you look at the right slider, it no longer has any impact on the throttle. Now, while you're flying, it is possible to go back into launch mode if the throttle stick is at about 40% and you bring the right slider all the way down to zero. 
So if you do that, you're back into launch mode with the throttle. The best thing to do is once you've taken over with throttle and you're flying the plane correctly the way you want it, just reach up and flip off the SA switch. Then when you do that, it doesn't matter where the right slider is. It's completely off. And you've got total control on the throttle. All right, let's take a look at the mixer so you can see how this is applied. In the mixer, I simply added a line under the throttle that says source, right slider, switch, L10, and multiplex replace. And by doing that, the right slider becomes the throttle. Also notice on the elevator line, I added another one, but using switch L10 with an offset of negative 10. That's how I get a slight reflex on the elevator for launch mode. So while I'm launching the plane in launch mode, I get a slight up elevator. If you remember in the simulator, that looks a little like this. You see the negative 10 right here for channel two. If I turn launch mode off, that negative 10 goes away. Now you may have different requirements for your elevator. You may not want to use that at all. You may want to add additional logic that doesn't allow you to re-enable launch mode while you're flying, only after you've enabled the SH switch. That's all possible. I just wanted to give you the fundamentals on how you can think through a problem like this and how you can create a solution for yourself. So now you have the basics. I hope you have a lot of fun with it and I also hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when new material hits the channel. Check out my affiliate links in the description. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.